Today, we are headed to the breathtaking landscape of the beautiful Eastern Cape. Just inland from the beautiful coastal areas of Butterworth and Bisho lies a small town known as Lusikisiki, a few kilometers from which is the Miskaba Bridge Project, which is currently underway, which forms part of the N2 Wild Coast Project. It will have a main span of 580 meters supported by a pier of 127 meter tall pylons will be 194 meters above the valley floor making it the third highest bridge in africa the new protected areas will see the enlargement of two existing nature reserves silaka and mkambati and the creation of several new protected areas in the pots and jones in Kusa hill and winnie matikizela mandela local municipal areas the Msikaba and Mutentu bridges are part of an improvement to the older N2 Wild Coast Toll Road that will be 85 kilometers shorter and three hours faster. Designed by the Danish firm Dissing Weitling, the concrete structure will have a deck 22.8 meters wide with walkways on both edges. No South African firm has ever done a balanced cantilever bridge from this magnitude before. As such, South African tenderers have joined ventures with international firms to bring skills and expertise into the bridge's construction. It is said, if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Construction of the breathtaking Msigaba Bridge in the Eastern Cape is a collaborative process that is led by SUNRA, the Department of Transport, local communities, SMMEs, and the construction joint venture Mexa. This is the Eastern Cape at work. Here's to world-class infrastructure. I'm excited to be part of the Sandral uh, mega project. This is not just a project for us. This is a program that we're uh, seeking to ensure the improvement of the transport linkage between the Eastern Cape and KZN. My role in the project as a district manager is to ensure the communication with the stakeholders, all the key stakeholders within the area, ensure the stakeholder engagement and management interactions with the small, medium and micro enterprises, leading the team of professionals within the district of Wild Coast to ensure the execution of the project and the creation of the conducive environment for this project to uh, continue. I'm the lead project manager for the team that's responsible for implementing the Into Wild Coast Road Greenfield project. Uh, the 112 kilometers has been divided up into nine primary projects, but each of those projects have got several sub-projects under them, uh, as well as associated community development projects, and all about 30 contracts that have to be implemented uh, in three of the poorest municipalities in uh, South Africa. SANRAL is, is effectively the implementing agent for the Department of Transport uh, and in turn the SA government. So we are responsible for the National Roads Network, which is the key economic arteries of this country. Uh, World Bank studies have shown again and again that um, road infrastructure is, is the most important uh, um, infrastructure uh, in terms of economic growth. If you don't have roads, you, your economy cannot grow um, and, and vice versa. Uh, the, the saying is um, growth follows roads and not vice versa. Um, so, and in fact, in terms of, of World Bank studies, um, in terms of investment by government, uh, it is only education which has a better return on investment than, than roads uh, for, for, for the spend, expenditure of, of, of uh, public funds. SANRAL is recognised by, by almost all stakeholders as being um, a very a good department or a state entity. Um, we are led by professionals and we follow very ethical um, and uh, legal procedures. There's no taint of corruption uh, uh, around SANRAL and we're very proud of that. We're proud of the, the quality and the um, effectiveness of, of, of what we do. Um, our, our, road, our national road network is one of the best in the world. Um, and I think we fail sometimes to get that recognition because we get tainted with the quality of roads at a provincial and local level. <laughs> Thank you.
Whoever you are, wherever you are, we're happy to create a road network that connects you to what matters most. Sanral Beyond Roads. This project, as well as any other Sanral project, uh, Sanral puts a lot of emphasis in providing work opportunities for local people, and this project again is no different to those. We uh, um, have to uh, provide work for the contract value up to 30% of the project. Um, it goes to local entrepreneurs and workers. What we have in place on this particular contract, we have uh, the standard public liaison committee who is made up of local people and those people choose the labour that's going to be employed on site and we take them in as long as they pass the medicals, they will be used on site. And the same applies to any skilled personnel. We first of all, we ask if those people are in the community and if they are in the community, we will then use those people. If they're not in the community, we will then uh, source them externally. As you know, this area is very, very poor. The people here are, are uh, really desperate for work and, and work opportunities. We provide as much as we can and the contractor on this site is actually going beyond what is required. We also make use of local entrepreneurs and in this particular case all the uh, concrete aggregate that you see on the site and all the cement production on the site is done by local entrepreneurs um, and so every cent that comes from that goes to the local community in some form including the trucking of the materials to site is done through the trucking association. On the project we have around 55,000 cubic meters of concrete that uh, gets manufactured on site on, with various um, batching plants. The batching plant that uh, we see here today is a, a dry mix batch plant. It's an automated plant. The, the process uh, is as follows. The concrete aggregates gets loaded into the receiving bins. The concrete um, stone, dust and sand then gets transported into the weighing bin which is automatically weighed um, with the batching system. It then gets transported through a conveyor system into the ready mix truck. The cement and slagman, that is the cementitious components, gets weighed and transported into the truck as well as, well as the water and admixtures. The function of the admixtures is to increase the workability and the water demand of the concrete itself that uh, also increases the strength. The aggregates and cement is then mixed in the ready mix truck where after a while it gets tested for the consistency which is a slump test um, that gives you an indication of the workability of the concrete itself. It then gets transported to site in the ready mix truck and gets loaded into a concrete pump which disperses the concrete in the various forms and uh, areas of placement. The concrete then gets um, vibrated to increase the compaction of the product. We also have um, an agreement with the um, business forums here that we will use plant that's available in here, whether it's a bulldozer or a grader, we'll use that plant if it's available from the local community first, uh, as long as it meets the requirements for, uh, for the plant is operational, and then only if we can't use them, then we, uh, we will go and get them elsewhere. And to date this has worked exceptionally well and a lot of plant has been used on the site. And once the roadworks project starts, um, there probably won't be enough plant on site to, to actually use that, but they're fully occupied. In terms of the uh, local community, we, we have had in this particular project very little problems. Uh, the local community have been very cooperative. Um, they've helped us with a lot of, a lot of issues. And uh, so far we probably, we have something just, uh, just over 500 people on site and 300 to 350 of those are local people. So it's a very high percentage. Being a, a mega project, the beauty about it is the magnitude of the project that will have benefits, especially for uh, the economic viable groups. 
like your youth. You have uh, students that we are training in the project. Uh, we have skills development program that is meant to benefit local students. We have about nine students that are doing uh, in-service training on civil engineering. You have students that are also being trained and also uh, registered, some of them with EXA. And you have students that are benefiting through the various departments within this project, starting from quality assurance and going to other sectors, including the bridge uh, construction. You have students that are working on the pylon legs and you have students that are working on the shattering and concrete hands on the project and you have students that are involved in the uh, environmental management section. We also um, have set aside quite a lot of money for um, local uh, construction of access roads in and around the area. Bear in mind that the bridge itself is a very technical uh, structure and there's not a lot of people even in South Africa who can do some of this work so Sandal has put out uh, contracts for local entrepreneurs, local businesses to actually do construction. This includes uh, building uh, access roads around the site um, and we, for that we've been crushing uh, aggregate, we've been putting it on the road, we've been shaping the road and you will see there's a vast improvement in the road conditions in and around this site. And in addition to that uh, we'll be starting work very shortly with the R61 between Port St. John's and Bazana area, mainly up to Flagstaff, and we will be upgrading that road to the standards, and anybody who's driven on that road recently will know that it's pothole hell. And this is all money being allocated by Sandal for provincial and district roads, which is not their responsibility, but they're putting money into that, which is great. We've um, taken a, a site at Magwati Estate, which is very close to here. It's, uh, the existing houses for the old managerial houses are very run down and, and been destroyed. We have now rebuilt those houses and we start putting our staff into those houses and they are now living there and those houses will be handed back to Magwati Estate for future tourism needs which will bode well for all the tourism needs that are in this area be it, be it the wild coast, be it the terrain, be it the um, waterfalls in the area this is all bode well for future tourism in this area. In terms of uh, um, access roads to the site, that was also built uh, a year or so before this contract started just to get, provide access to, to the site and that was all done using the same process of local community wherever possible. All, all risks come down to um, things that might affect the time of completion, the cost or the quality. Um, and there's, there's a multitude of, of, of factors. There's those factors which are beyond your control, such as, as, as extreme weather events um, and uh, external factors such as COVID. Um, and then there's the factors which are, are within your control, such as quality uh, and cost, but which requires hands-on um, monitoring uh, and, and uh, a constant supervision uh, to ensure that uh, the taxpayer and the government uh, it gets what it is paying for and what it, uh, it asked for. I think in the early parts of this project it's been the, the dynamics on the ground, the, the social issues, um, getting to understand um, the lives and um, issues that affect uh, deep rural communities. Uh, and um, businesses and, and stakeholders in small municipalities, which are very different, um, though also in many ways the same as, as the metros, but there, there's the unique issues, particularly when we're dealing uh, extensively in, in uh, communal land with traditional authority structures, uh, which requires a lot more uh, finesse and, and um, understanding of, of culture and procedure. Uh, which is very different, for example, uh, to a project in an urban area. The starting point for any project manager is a technical knowledge in the area of, of uh, implementation, but I've found uh, what the, the major skill that is actually required, uh, even though you might come from a technical background, is soft skills. Uh, being able to deal with people uh, from various categories and walks of life and understanding the issues that affect them, how they affect them, and how people perceive and understand um, the changes that you're trying to implement 
um, because change is, is can, sometimes scary and not everyone is, is happy to change. Uh, so change management uh, and, and people skills I think is, is uh, the key to being a good project manager. It's time. It's time to enable trade, power big businesses, develop SMMEs, and reconnect workers to their jobs. It's time to kickstart Sandral's new infrastructure development projects that will help us get back on the road to a better South Africa. It's time for new beginnings. We're experiencing a number of challenges within the project. Uh, challenges like you find that there are a number of contestations from the, amongst the stakeholders around the project. And as such, they are, such contestations affect the project. There are other challenges that we experience is the leadership that is jostling with power and such uh, issues uh, affect the project because they're using the project in their issues. And you have the other challenges on the other side of the project, not specifically in Msigaba, but in, in Package 7, where there is a Madiba Crisis Committee, and we still have that, those challenges. Even though we have uh, various platforms to address such challenges, we are currently engaging with Amadiba Crisis Committee and we are prepared going forward to engage with them because we believe in, in robust engagement. We are not just here to implement the project, but we rather respect the communities and we are more than willing to engage with the communities to resolve any other challenges. We also more than uh, willing to work with all the key stakeholders to resolve whatever challenges that are coming up. Currently, uh, those are the minor challenges that I will say the project has because some of the other challenges that we had at the beginning of the project, we have managed to address them. And in any developmental state of governance, there will always be challenges, especially during project execution. But what matters mostly is how you resolve the challenges and the will, which is what we are doing. We had those platforms to converse, to share information and to resolve any other challenges that we may experience. Um, on the on the uh, north bank of the of the structure, the Sandal are going to be building a visitor centre. They call it, but it's more than a visitor centre, which will house videos of the construction and, and uh, people can look at it and come and visit it when they're here. But there will be things like petrol stations and restaurants and that sort of thing on the north bank. In addition to that, there's a multitude of, of pathways and things so people can walk to the bridge and around the bridge and down the other side. In addition to that, across one of the small tributaries, there will be a footpath will come out into a viewing platform and, and people will be able to walk across a, a little swing bridge across that little gorge there and go and stand and look at the bridge from the side on. It's going to be a magnificent view on, I might tell you, a magnificent bridge. Uh, this project is, uh, is due for completion sometime in 2024. and. Uh, uh, it, it went through a, a, a bit of a slow patch as we were coming out of the ground. You, you must understand that below the ground there's a lot of infrastructure we can't see. A lot of work went on before that. There's been a few issues, technical issues on the site which have been overcome, including things like COVID and so on. And uh, the contract is expecting to be finished in 2024, early 2024. In terms of uh, the, the site, uh, between the um, Sandral and the engineer and the contractor is excellent relationship and uh, it's been a, a pleasure working on the site. Sandral is really uh, one of the best uh, uh, state-owned ent enterprises. It's recognized as such in the civil engineering uh, um, industry and uh, I'm proud to be working for Sandral and delivering such an important project. 
As per contract participation goal CPG, at the end of May 2021, 27 local suppliers, 30 local service providers, 20 local subcontractors, 31 local persons were employed out of a total workforce of 509 persons on site. 147 lockers were employed by the main contractor and 163 by subcontractors. Furthermore, 22 SMMEs were trained on the tendering process and SEDA SMME support was completed on site. Manufacturing Development Program SABS 6 SMMEs commenced but was delayed by Level 3 lockdown. A biodiversity offset agreement has also been established with the Eastern Cape Parks and Tourism Board. This will ensure that the Ponderland biome is preserved for generations to come through the declaration, rehabilitation and ongoing protection of some 15,000 hectares of new conservation areas.